Hi guys, this is cycle three, month one, week three. So next week will be this, the end of next week will be strike test. So we're going to start with warm up. We're going to start with. I'm going to be really careful back here because the, the socks on the on the wooden floor are slippery. But you're going to run back and forth, touch, and touch. And then punches. Make sure you keep your hands up and you keep your feet moving. Okay, next one you're going to shuffle. So you're going to start back here and you're shuffling. Just be together and apart down. I keep thinking that this is going to work. And then you don't see enough of my feet. And back. And down. And back. And then knees. Make sure you keep your standing knee bent when you do this. Other side. And last one, I'm starting back here and I'm shuffling forward and back with punches. And then kicks front side back. And then right back to the very beginning, we run. Punches. And then we're going to shuffle side to side and back. Knees.
other side. And then shuffling forward and back with punches. Kicks, front side back. Okay, so if this is your first workout of the day, you can be done with the warm up. If it's not your first workout of the day, do that segment. So one more set, running, shuffling, forward, shuffling with punches, or two more sets. And then grab a drink if you need it and come on back and stretch. So stretch, reach up. And I'm not just putting my hands up, I'm reaching for the ceiling, like trying to put my hands against the ceiling. Then I put my hands down and reach for the floor. Over to one side, grab your ankle, pull your chest to your knee. And down in a side stretch. Turn. Make sure your ankle is out past your knee. Stretch your hip flexor. Straighten out your legs. All of my toes are pointing that way. Chin is up. Legs are straight. Back is flat. Lean my chest down towards my front knee. I should feel it primarily in the hamstring of the front leg. A little bit in the calf of the back leg. Up to the center, toes straight forward, push your knees out. And other side, grab your ankle. Down in the side stretch. And turn, stretch your hip flexor. seat. One foot out in front of you, take the other one, cross it, your foot over the opposite knee. If you can pull this knee in and keep both butt cheeks on the floor, do it that way. If you can't, keep that leg out. Whichever knee is up, the opposite elbow goes on the outside of it and pushes it across. Other side. Okay, then I'm gonna put the bottoms of my feet together as if I'm doing a butterfly stretch. And if you can do the butterfly stretch, don't grab your toes, grab your heels. And if you can, rock, rock them a little bit so that your knees are coming up and down and tagging the floor. If you can't, put one hand down to stabilize and just push the other knee, pulse it up and down. And then the other side. Feet out in front of you. Okay, wide straddle or not, I don't care. But the goal here is elbows to the floor. My toes are not pointed. They're straight up to the ceiling. My chin is up and I'm reaching my elbows to the floor. Keep your chin up. If you round like this, it's a different stretch, which is not what the one I want you to be doing right now. Pull your feet in. Squat. Okay, my heels are on the floor here. 
rock back and forth a little bit. If you still have trouble doing this, now we're what, like five, six months into this, working out at home, it means that your, your, your Achilles, your calves are tight. More time in bare feet or in shoes that are completely flat so that there's no difference in height between the heels and the toes. Then put your hands down and straighten out your legs. And up. Okay, so a little bit of conditioning now. Um, the first one we're doing, you got to remember which side you're doing it on because the next set you're going to do on the other side. So you're going to throw a knee and then turn and lunge. Get in the habit when you do lunge of keeping your hands up so that you always, your head's always protected. Okay, next one. Sit up with a jab cross. So when I do the sit up, I am never laying completely down and I'm never sitting all the way up. I'm just coming, so just my shoulder blades just tag the floor and I just come to 45 degrees, jab cross. Next one. The list is over here next to my phone and I can't see it that well. So next one you're going to do is just push ups. However you want your hands to be. I don't care if you're on your toes or on your knees, but in either case, your back is straight. No, no butts out here. And this isn't a push up. We're going to do knee lunge on the other side. So you got to remember which side you did. I think I went that way. So I'm going to go this. I think I went this way. So I'm going to go this way this time. Knee and lunge. Okay, next one. We've been working on these. Hopefully, you've got the coordination down for them now. These are called dead bugs. So I'm on my back. Feet are up, hands are up. One hand goes down, or your one foot goes down, and the opposite hand. Not too close to the couch. And last one is dips. If your wrists bend, ideally you're gonna have your fingertips facing your toes. My wrists don't bend. So I gotta actually do these fingertips. But I'm here, tabletop, and the motion comes from my elbows. So I'm working my triceps. If your lower back will not tolerate this, you can do this. But make sure if you're doing this, that you're not doing this, that you're actually using your triceps and not your core muscles. This is not a sit up, it's an arm exercise. Okay, so if your muscles are not sore, do another set and then come back to me. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do, these are sit outs. We worked on these last, if tongues are done, we worked on these last week. AK, I think I've done them with you. In live class, I don't know that I've done with, with done them with you in video yet. So when I do a sit out, I put my feet on the floor and I put my hands on the floor. This is not push up position. My butt's way in the air. 
And when I do, I'm gonna pick up one hand, touch the opposite leg. Now that leg that I'm touching is gonna to shoot through this hole that I made. And up, other hand comes up, shoot through the hole. Okay, if you don't have it, stop the video, rewind it, watch it again, keep going. Okay, so why would we use, what's the point of the tripod? It's a get up. And if you're gonna knock down, you wanna defend yourself and you wanna get away before the person who knocked you down chases you down, but you also wanna be moving your head away from them. So if I get up like this, Okay, if I'm coming this way, look where my head is. If I get up this way, my head is coming towards the person who knocked me down. If instead, I get up this way. Okay, so this is the tripod that we did. I'm gonna take this hand and put it down, and I do my right hand because I want my left side forward when I get up. It doesn't really matter which way you go. And I'm gonna, so my right hand is down, so my left foot is planted. So, Left hand is up, opposite foot, steps back through the hole, and I come to my guard stance. So going in the same direction with you, I don't break my neck on the, on the slippery floor. My right hand is down, my left foot, my opposite foot is down. So this hand is up, this is the opposite leg. I'm just doing the second half of the tripod. Push back and stand up. Okay, so we're gonna do, we're gonna do break fall. Um, the wooden floor, I'm not gonna do break fall when I'm standing up. My spine is happy the way it is. But you still gotta remember these things. And if you're in the Karate Kids class, you've said this a million times. And if you're in the Tongue class, you've heard me say it with the kids. When you do a back break fall, your butt hits first, then your back, then your hands, your head never hits. You keep your chin tucked. So you do your back break fall from here. My chin is tucked, my, my butt hits, it's already there, my back hits, and then my arms hit. They want my arms to slap out down here. If they slap out up here, I'm gonna hurt my shoulder. So I'm gonna start here. Butt, back, hands. Butt, back, hands. Butt, back, hands. Okay, then we're gonna do, from the ground, you can do a side kick. So when I do a side kick on the ground, I'm gonna come here, I'm in the guard stance. This hand is up, it's protecting my face, and I'm doing a side kick. That shoulder does not like being the one on the ground. Um, here's my side kick. Okay, for more power, I'm going to pick this hip up off the floor and push in to what I'm doing. So we're going to put all those things together. Somebody knocks you down. You do your back break fall. Butt, back, hands. I turn here. I throw a side kick. This hand's already down. Plant that foot step back and I'm ready to go. So let's do that again. From here, butt, back, hands. Elbow down, side kick. Plant that foot, step back, and you're up in the guard stance. So what I'd like you to do is find somebody in your house who can do that with you. Have them push you, not hard, especially if they're working on a wooden floor. Have them push you. Do your break fall. They walk towards you, you kick them. Don't kick their knees. And then get up with your tripod get up before they tag your head, okay? So I want you to practice that with who's ever in your house. Then we have one more thing we're gonna do. And this is back to wind your body back up a little bit before we go on and do some more karate stuff. So, Lunges. When I do a lunge, when you do a lunge, you can step whichever way you want. You can step forward or you can step back. I, I tend to step back because when you do your lunge, you want this knee to be over the ankle. So you have a 90 degree angle here. If you're out this way, it stresses your knee. And I just find it easier to put myself in the position that I need to be in order to, if I step... If I step back rather than forward, I end up in the position I want to be. Doesn't matter if you want right, if you're more comfortable doing it going forward, that's fine. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do five lunges. One, 
two, three, four, five, and then five front kicks. One, two, three, four, five. Five lunges. One, two, three, four, five, and five front kicks. One, two, three, four, five. So if you have a heavy bag in your house, what you should be doing now is put the heavy bag out. Do your lunges, hit the heavy bag with the five front kicks. If you don't have a heavy bag, if you have a, someone in your house who holds a kicking shield, hit them with the kicking shield. If there's nobody who's willing to do that, at the very least, hold out a pillow as a small target. So you do your five lunges, five front kicks, five lunges, five front kicks, then go get a drink, and then come on back and we'll get on with the rest of the class. Okay, once again, my phone is not cooperating. I just recorded like six minutes of video working through two different kicks and then the phone just, the video just stopped working and didn't save. So we're gonna go back through this really quick, but we're not gonna start all the way from scratch again. Get your chair. Side kicks. Get my stool out of the way. We're just gonna do all the kicks and then we'll do them all over the target. First one is side kick. One, two, three, four, five. Two, two, three, four, five. Three, two, three, four, five. Four, two, three, four, five. Five, two, three, four, five. Then do five more on the other side. Yeah, I'm not gonna do five more on the other side, but I want you to do five on the other side while we set up the next one. So one, two, three, four, five. Two, two, three, four, five. Three, two, three, four, five. Four, two, three, four, five. Five, two, three, four, five. Okay, then we're gonna go on to the next kick. The next one is actually a knee. So when you hit somebody with a knee, you want to hit them, tighten up your knee, the muscles in your cat in your quads. You want to hit them with that muscle, the base of your quad. You don't want to hit your kneecap. Okay, so in the sparring combination that we did earlier in the week, you would just bring your hips forward and knee. That's if somebody's coming at you and you want to hold them in distance, power comes from rotation. That's where your rotation is. From a self-defense point of view, you want to grab somebody and pull them in. So I make a clinch, hands are here, um, butterfly, you never lace your fingers because if you do, when they get pulled on, they're going to get broken. So you make your butterfly. Butterfly goes on the back of their neck, forearms squeeze their neck, you put your, their hand, their head on your chest, and we're going to do five on each side. One, two, three, four, five, and then five on the other side. One, two, three. Four, five. Again, we got one more kick to do. Well, it's one more series of kicks. Actually, it's three kicks. Go get your chair back. Okay, so this kick, these are all meant to do from the same chamber. So, let's see. My target is here. So I'm going to do front kick chamber and throw a front kick. I'm going to come back to the front kick chamber, turn my body, throw a roundhouse kick, come back to the front kick chamber, turn again, and throw a side kick. So, hmm, I'm not sure what's better angle to show you this from. So here, front kick, back to the front kick chamber, round kick, back to the front kick chamber, side kick. So on the other side, front kick chamber, front kick, front kick chamber, turn to the round kick chamber, round toes kick, back to the front kick, turn, side kick. And you're like, why would I ever do that? Because if I'm sparring with somebody and I'm here and this, I bring this foot up, they're assuming I'm going to throw a front kick. So they're blocking here. Okay. Round toes kick from the same chamber. 
They're assuming that I'm going to kick here. Side kick from the same chamber. So that's why you want to be able to do it. Um, all of them back and forth from the same chamber. So put that away and then get a stool. It can be a taller stool than this. That's okay. But what I want you to do now is I want you to think about kicking over that. So we're going to do side kicks first. One, two, three, four, five. And then other leg. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, now we're going to do knees. And what I want you to think about when we're doing knees is when you do your knee, your hip has to push forward. So I'm going to start here and throw my knee, and my knee needs to come out past the end of the stool. That means that my hip will be coming far enough forward that I'm actually doing a useful technique. One, two, three, four, five. And then the other side. One, two, three, four, five. And then the last one is the three kick combination. Okay, so focus on balance here. Front kick chamber, front kick. Front kick chamber, turn, roundhouse kick. Back to the front kick chamber, turn to the side kick, side kick, back to the front house chamber. Yeah, you see what I'm getting at. Okay, so now I should do those kicks over, front, round, side all over the target without putting your foot down I want you to do at least five on each side if you can get somebody in your house to hold a target for you a noodle a pillow at different heights then change them up as you go so each one is at a different height then we are going to go back and we're going to review our one steps last cycle if you took class from me we did the first three one steps one two and three three parts three counts this cycle we're going back and adding a fourth count to those and adding some more one steps so these if you did class with me video class last week or the week before we did the fourth part of the first one step if you didn't get the fourth part of the second one step go back to monday's video we're going to do it today but if you want all the little tiny picky little details broken down go back to monday's video Il six sude run number one. Four parts, four counts. One, two, three, four, and back. Okay, going the other way. One. Two, three, four, and back. Okay, then I want you to stop the video. And I want you, hopefully you're doing this with somebody in your house. If there's nobody in your house taking karate, remind them again that they should be doing this. This is the beginning of a new cycle. This is a good time to start taking karate. Get them to attack you. They're going to throw a hook punch, a hook punch, a hook punch, and you're going to do the self-defense. Then we're going to go on to Il Six Sude run number two. So first part, step forward, center block chop. Two, pull back, front leg side kick, center block chop. Third part, back leg, crescent kick, side kick, center block chop. Fourth part, step back. High block, spin side kick, come forward, double punch. So from the other direction. One, two, three, four, and back. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to do each one of those at least three times. And each time, I want you to think about what your transition stance is. So, like if we're doing the first one, 
my transition, I step back. I'm in soaker tassie here as I block. So my hips can rotate. So that's where I'm generating my power on that punch. So I want you to go through each one and each of the steps, figure out where your stance is and where your transition is. So if you did the Monday video class, we did, we worked on explosive speed so that for each count, you were starting at your guard stance and exploding into the self-defense. So now what I want you to do is figure out where those transitions are and then that same explosive speed with the power added. So on the first move, I'm gonna step back. Here's my Sogur Chassis center block and then I rotate so there's my power, the power for the uppercut. But now what I want you to do, somebody's coming at you and I want not necessarily the whole thing fast, but I want the phrase to explode. So somebody attacks me and it goes fast, but I'm not losing that transition stance because if I just do this, it's fast, but there's no power because I didn't have the, the hip transition. So it's not useful as a self-defense. So I want you to practice both of them, one and two, three or four times each. Each phrase, explosive and thinking about where you're getting your power from. Then we're going to go on to forms. Basic form one, we're gonna, I wanna mess with the three quarter turn. So I'm gonna start this facing back to you, facing the same way you are so you can do this with me. I'm gonna start here in triple chassis, okay? This is where the people in your house who don't take karate, go get them. This is, we call this basic form one, not because it's easy, but it's the basis that everything else you do builds on. So if they're like, I can't do this, I can't do karate, go get them, have them do this drill with you. Once they got this, they're good, they can do karate. Okay, so you're gonna start here. I'm in shingle chassis. All my toes are facing forward. Right knee's bent, left knee straight. I'm gonna take my, I'm always turning counterclockwise. So I'm gonna do a quarter turn counterclockwise and bring my left foot in. Then I'm gonna take the left foot and I'm gonna put it 45 degrees behind me and turn so I'm in shingle chassis facing that direction and step. Okay, I'm gonna come back and do the same thing. Left foot comes in, I'm gonna do a quarter turn. Left foot keeps going behind me, half a turn. So there's your three quarters, you did a quarter and a half, and then step through. Okay, then I'm gonna add the hands to that. So I'm here in a punch. As I do the first quarter and I bring my feet together, right hand comes down, left one comes up, full cross body chamber. So my whole body's covered, there's no open targets. Step to 45 behind, turn, low block, step and punch. So going this way, I'm here, look, full body chamber, foot comes quarter turn, feet together, put the left foot out behind, other half turn block, step and punch. And we say block, but really what you're doing is you're taking your hammer fist and you're attacking somebody there inside the knee. Okay, so white belts, we're gonna do the form, the whole form, basic form one. I'm gonna do it facing this way, so that you're following along with me. And, but I want you to think about that technique, what we're doing. One, two, one, two, one, two, three, four. Okay, here's our three quarter turn. I'm gonna make a full cross body chamber. Right hand comes down, left one comes up. Left foot turn comes in, quarter turn. Left foot goes out. You finish the half turn, block, step and punch. One, two, one, two, three, four. Now we do the three quarter turn again. Look, full cross body chamber. Left foot comes in, you've made a quarter turn. Left foot continues. You make the rest of the half a turn low block, step and punch, one, two. Okay, white belts. And people who don't take karate yet and are starting now, hint, hint, go practice that. Everybody else, orange and up. So if you're tungsten, if you're a brand new AK black belt and you have not taken tungsten O classes up until this point, or up until a couple few weeks ago, you are a white belt in, in Tung Shido, so you are practicing that. Um, nine gup and up, orange belt and up in Tung Shido. Basic form three. Also has a three-quarter turn. 
So I did the three quarter turn from basic form three. We're gonna start here. So I'm in Sogo Chazi Toes Out Horse Stance. My left foot's gonna come in. It's gonna go straight back. So like if I have my foot on this line, my left foot comes in, it comes straight back down the line, and I turn and settle in the cast stance, and then I step again. So I'm here, my right foot's on the line, left foot comes into the line right by the right foot, goes straight back and turns. So my body is making a three-quarter turn. I'm going from this, from facing there, to facing there. But my feet aren't, don't seem like they're going quite as far because I'm starting off and I'm going from a horse stance to a cat stance, which is not as wide of a spread. So I'm here, um, center punch. Hands are gonna chamber here. I gotta be able to see over them. Palms are away from me. And the hand that's gonna block, which is my left one, is further away from me. In, straight back, settle and block, step and punch. And again, left foot comes in, chamber. Left foot goes straight back, settle and block, step and punch. Okay, so now we're gonna do all of basic form three. One, two, one, two, one, two, three, four. This is not in the form, but if I do my three-quarter turn out there, I'm gonna be on the wooden floor and I'm gonna break my neck. One, there's your three-quarter turn. Two, one, two, one, two, three, four. Okay, here's my three-quarter turn again. Hands come here, left one's on the outside. Left foot comes in, straight out block, two, one, two, and back. Okay, so beginners, Tong Shadow beginners, orange belts and blue belts, you're practicing that three-quarter turn until you can't stand it anymore, and then you're gonna go on and you're gonna put in the form and practice the form. Tong Shadow green and up, King on Sadon. Thing we're gonna practice is from here, Side kick, rake, re-chamber, step back. So I'm in chungle chassis facing here, and I grab the head, and now I'm in chungle chassis facing there. So from this angle, this is what it looks like. I'm here, I kick, I re-chamber, I land here. Here's my rotation. I come through Soko Rip and into chungle chassis to strike. If you don't chamber, re-chamber all the way back to your knee, this is what tends to happen. Now I'm not in chungle chassis. This is not a wide enough stance to be stable. So I want you to practice. You're gonna practice this on both sides. From here, kick and chop, re-chamber, step back, chungle chassis, through sofa chassis, strike. Same thing on the other side. Kick and chop, re-chamber all the way to your knees, step back, chungle chassis, through sofa chassis, strike. Okay, then the part of the form that you guys are doing now. One, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, and back. So, tongue to the cups, you guys are practicing that. Uh, black belt, sip soup. The thing I want you guys practicing is there's another good way to set this up. I'm gonna start here. Hands are gonna come here. Crane stance, strike. Crane stance, strike. So when I do this, my upper body is pulled here but my knee's coming across the other way. So crane stance, strike. Crane stance, strike. Crane stance, strike. I'm gonna go back and do it again. Okay, and then the fourth. 
I want you to do that back and forth lots of times. Don't just say, okay, she just did that three times, I'm done. No, do it a bunch of times so you can do it without having to think about it. Then we start here. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and back. Okay, so first, first on, you're practicing that. Seconds and thirds, Yekro Edon. Um, what I want you thinking about right now, I want you to take this move, I want you to come here, think about blocking a hook punch to your head. Okay, so I'm standing here, someone throws a hook punch, I'm gonna swing my arms around. This one is blocking the hook punch, and this is protecting my head. So now they're gonna throw a punch with the other hand, I'm gonna block again, and then palm strike, push away. In the form, you're only pushing away with one hand, but I want you to here to push away with two. So, block the hook punch. Other hand is up protecting my head. Block the punch from the other side, push. So, block, block, push. Okay, and then your form, the part that we're doing for this month, actually here, yeah. one, two, three, four, five, one, there's that block, two, three, one, two, three, one, Two, three, and back. Okay, so you guys are gonna practice that. If you have questions on any of your forms, videotape yourself doing the part that you're not sure of, send it to me on Facebook Messenger, have your parents send it to me if you're not 18, and I will try to answer and make corrections and send you back the answer as a video. Then, I need everybody to get their screen mistake. Okay, screen mistakes are good. Depends where you're working. A scream a stick in the house is not necessarily good. I don't know if you can see it, but the light here has a string and there's a TV deck. Throwing the extreme a stick to either of those would not be a good idea. So for now, I'm gonna use my spoons. You don't have to use a scream a stick for this. If you're living in a place, if you're in a dorm and you're not allowed to have a weapon, or your mother says you may absolutely not use your weapons in the house, use something else. Okay, so I'm gonna start. This is the single stick set. I'm starting. Here, if I had the stick, I would have my hand choked up so I had the piece underneath. I'm gonna do the same thing with the spoon because I wanna be able to strike with that end and I wanna be able to catch here and use it to pull. So I start here again, I'm gonna show you this facing in both directions. I start here, blood cup, courtesy, step back, cover your head. So it has to be here. This is not covering your head, it's gotta be like this. And the other hand is up covering my face, step forward. Strike high. This one is you're not going through, it's bounce off. Strike low, strike high. This bounces off. Now I'm gonna orbit. So it's like I'm wiping sweat off my head. Strike, this strike comes all the way through. Then the, the stick keeps going that way and my foot follows it. And I come back and I protect my head again. And I step forward and I strike down. So going in the other direction, it looks like this. Blood cup, courtesy, step forward, cover your head. Step back, sorry, step forward, strike high, strike low, strike high. This is the hardest part of this whole set. I'm gonna orbit, it comes around like this, it strikes, and then it keeps going. And my foot follows it, and I come back, and I'm exactly where I was at the beginning of the set. Come forward and strike down again. So now I want you to think about what you're doing. You do this, if you get somebody in your house, you give them a stick or a spoon too, and you practice with them. But I want you to visualize what you're doing when you do this with somebody. Somebody's attacking, I'm here, I'm ready. I'm coming forward, I'm striking the side of their head, temple, inside of the knee, face. Bring it around, hit whatever part of their head I can. Keep going, regrouping, seeing that they that may or may not be coming at me again. Then I'm gonna come back forward and I'm gonna strike all the way down from collarbone to opposite hip. Okay, so I want you guys to practice that. Then. Beginners, that's what you're practicing. The rest of you guys, go get your other spoon. 
or your other stick or your other pen. I don't care what you use. You can use your screaming sticks if you want to. Okay, so we're doing the whole top right now. So last week we did, and the week before we did this. Start here, I'm mirror to you. So you would have it on your right. I have it on my left. You're going to one, two, three. And you bring it here and bring it back to the other side. One, two, three. And bring it back to the other side. One, two, three. And bring it back to the other side. So now from behind me, you can see where my sticks end up, but you can't see where they're going. But some people still find it easier this way. One, two, three. Bring it back. One, two, three. Bring it back. Okay. The reason I make you bring it back is because now we're going to do the other side. So start with them on your left shoulder. And I'm going to go left, right, left. Bring them back. Left, right, left. Bring them back. Left, right, left. Bring them back. So from here, left, right, left. Bring them back. Left, right, left. Bring them back. So now facing you, if I were doing this with you, if you get this somebody to practice with you, this is ideal. I'm gonna start here. You guys are on this side. Right, left, right. Left, right, left. Right, left, right. Left, right, left. The only the very top couple of inches of your stick or your spoon should be making contact. You probably don't wanna do this with metal spoons because if you miss, it's gonna hurt a lot more. So then we start here. Right, left, right. Left, right, left. Right, left, right. Left, right, left. Okay, we do a bunch of stick sets. As far as I'm concerned, this one is by far the coolest. Practice this one. As we get further along in the cycle, we add another piece and then we add motion to it. And it's a lot of fun. <clears throat> so gups. Beginners, you're practicing your single stick set. Green belts and three stripe brown belts. You guys are practicing your two stick or your two spoon set. <clears throat> Actually, all the gups are practicing that right now. Everybody wearing a Tung Sudo colored belt is practicing one or the others of those right now. If you're wearing a black belt, even if you're a Tung Sudo gup, if you're an AK black belt, go get your fan. We're gonna add the next piece of the fan form. So last week we did, we're doing one phrase each month. There's four phrases. So this month we're doing first, the last two weeks we did the first half of the first phrase. I'll do it facing you and then I'll do it back to you. Pretend that I'm much more graceful and flowy than I am. Um, because when you guys do this, it's going to be much more graceful than flowy and flowy than what I'm doing. Starting here, it's like presenting. Now the attack is there. So my hand is coming up, keeping that person at distance. I'm stepping away from them and striking. Stepping away again. This hand comes down to protect my chin. And in real life, you would be here, protect your face. But this is stylized, so it's up. Now I'm going to look. Then my knees drop the fan. Then another attack coming from there. I'm going to step away from it and strike. Hands are going to circle. Right foot's going to step back towards the attack. And I'm going to end here. Knees bent. Left hand is pushing down. Right one is up. Fan is closed. So the first place I stopped was here. Fan was open. The, um, the other hand was up high. Second time, the fan is closed and the other hand is much lower. So facing in the same direction that you guys are, I'm here. One, two, uh, I just lost it. Three, four, five, six. And I don't know where the counts are. I learned this without counts. So if you're gonna do this with me, that's where we're gonna put the counts. One, my hands up, step away from it. Two, step away from it again. Three, four. Now I'm gonna step back in that direction. Five, now my right foot's gonna step back in that direction. Six. So one more time facing you. One, here's my hand, step away from it. Two, Continue stepping away from it. Three. Four. Now I'm going to step back in that direction. Five. And my right foot's going to come behind, and I'm going to step back in that direction. Six. Okay, so black belt, you guys are going to go practice that. Um, gups. 
white beginners single stick, green belts, three stripe brown belts. You're gonna pr keep practicing your double stick. The rest of the brown belts, the red belts, the apprentices, you're gonna get your bow and come back and we're gonna work on the bow form. Okay, so you went and got your bow, right? Oops, I forgot to set this clock. I can't keep track of my videos if I don't stop the clock. This is not my bow, it's my screaming stick. Okay, there's a, I don't know if you can see it in the video, but the light on the ceiling has a string hanging from it. I would just as soon not catch my bow in that, and I would really, it would be really bad if I threw my bow through Eric's television. So I'm going to use my screamer stick in here because it makes me a little bit more comfortable. Drills that we're doing, we can do just as nicely with the bow, with a screamer stick as we can with the bow. So what I'm going to do to start is I'm going to bow on my hip. Hands are here. Right hand is always palm up. Left hand is always palm down. I still have it in thirds, just as if it was a longer stick. It's just short enough that I'm not going to do any damage to the house. So I'm going to start here. Right now, I'm not in any stance at all. I disarm. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the end of my bow. This is somebody else's bow. The end of my bow is going to catch theirs, clear it, push it out of the way so that I can stab. Okay, catches theirs, clears it out of the way, stab. So I'm here. I'm going to clear, stab, clear, stab. You don't want to do this on the other side. We only ever do it on the right-hand side in the form. Doing it on the other side it would mess my hands up. I think I would just turn and face the other direction, which is how we do it in the form. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start here, and I pull back to a little cat stance. Most cat stances that we do are here. It's Korean cat stance. It's a Japanese cat stance. My hips are facing my target. 90% of my weight is here. I disarm and I stab. Disarm, stab. So let's do that five times. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, and then there's one more thing that we need to do. And, well, it's a, it's, a, it's a series of things, but take your bow and you hold it like this. So my right hand, I'll show it to you facing the other direction too, but you can't well be able to see what my hands are doing as well. I draw back, like you're playing a flute, draw back, stab. So when I stab at the front, it's tucked under my arm. Draw back, stab, draw back, stab. So the bow is staying level. It's not going like this and it's not going like this. It stays level. Draw back and stab, draw back and stab. So what I do is I start here. I'm in a horse stance. I draw back, step and stab. I step across, pick my foot up, draw back, step out into a horse stance, stab. So every time my foot comes up, I stab. So what my feet are doing is I'm going from horse stance, stepping across in the front to a cross stance, out to a horse stance, across in the front to a cross stance, out to a horse stance. So I start here, pull it back as I pick my foot up, stab as I land, I'm in the cross stance, pull it back as I pick my foot up, stab as I step. So you're stabbing when your feet are down, regardless of doing your cross stance or horse stance. You chamber when your feet are up. So going the other way, it's gonna look like this. Okay, then we're gonna go back to the beginning of the form. I'll do it for you in both directions. We're gonna go over the part that we did last week, and then we're gonna add a couple more moves. So we started here. One, look, step under, two, three. Okay, then you pull back. Somebody's attacking this leg. Pull back, cat stance. Two, step out, strike. Three, up, down, side, side. Pull back, disarm, and stab. Then we're gonna do the same thing in the other direction, but we're not switching hands. Like a lot of the forms, when I'm going this way, I have this hand, and I'm going this way, I have this hand. You're not switching in the bow form. I'm here. So I'm going to drop the end of the bow that's in the front is going to drop down again, and my cat stance, the front foot of my cat stance, and the end of my bow are both going to swing around to the other side and walk. Step out the chungu chas, you break the collarbone. Up, down, side, side. Pull back to the cat stance and stab. Then you're going to turn to the front. One disarm. Pull back and stab. Okay, so let's do that full thing. I'll face the other direction. One, two, three, one, 
two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. And show. Okay, so if you have questions about that, take a video of yourself, send me the question. Facebook Messenger, if you're under 18, have your parents send it to me, and I'll try to answer it probably also with the video.